If you like the content we bring you about the heavy metal world, please like, subscribe, and comment to help us grow the channel. Hi everyone, this is Alana Taramai from Mallet Smash Radio. Today I'll be speaking with Nick Hogg, the bass player and founder of AOR Melodic Hog Rock Band Nitrate. He's here to talk about the band's latest studio album, Field Heat. Check it out. Let's just get right into it. So how would you describe the new album, Field of Heat? I think it's a, a bit of a step up from the last album. Um, I think it's the best one we've done. It's very inspired by the 80s AOR melodic rock scene. Um, there's a big influence in movie um tv show nostalgia in there as well Ooh, nice you said 80s tv shows so uh what were your favorite what were your favorite shows back then uh, i was a massive miami vice uh fan when i was growing up so i think there's a little bit of that if in the um in some of the songs the the vibe hopefully especially songs like feel the heat uh live fast die young there's a little bit of feel to them that reminds me of those 80s shows no interestingly enough i don't know a lot of 80s shows but i i know some 70s shows and 90s shows but not really 80s shows oh they, they were the best Hmm. See the TV shows of the eighties: Night Rider, Fall Guy, um, Miami Vice. The you, the list went on. Fantastic shows. Was Growing Pains eighties or is that nineties? Um, Growing Pains. Not sure. I think that might have been eighties. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I'll let that up later. <laughs> um. So. Um, you said that it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit has a little bit of a different vibe from the, compared to the previous album Renegade. Is that correct? Yeah, a little bit. We've continued on that theme. Um, I think album three took us in more of a AOR melodic rock route, um, and this has picked up from where that left off. There's more guitars, uh, bigger production. I think bigger backing, uh, you know, a, a slightly different vibe, but we've continued along the same path. A favourite song? Do you have a favourite song from the album? From the album? Um, my favourite song is All The Right Moves, which was our second single. Um, some of the lads in the band, um, their favourite seems to be Feel The Heat. Um, and I think one of the uh, one of the guitarists' favourites is Satellite, which has a, a big Def Leppard feel to it. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, All the right Moves is actually my favourite song from the album. That one definitely sounds like Def Leppard as well. Yeah, with the big backing vocals and the really catchy chorus. Yeah, yeah, we we, we managed to get. Um, a musician called Paul Lane to sing the backing vocals for that one, um, whom um, I'm a big fan of. He was um, he was in Danger Danger for a while. Um, he's also the lead singer and writer for The Defiance, and he brought out a really successful, well, a really great solo album in the early nineties as well. Um, so it was it was great to have him. Um, you know, singing on the album. Was this the first time you ever worked with Pauline? It was, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, he did he, he did backing vocals on three of the tracks for us. Oh, okay. So all the right moves and what were the other two tracks? Um Big Time and also Hurricane. Uh oh, those are good ones. Yeah. So you mentioned that James helped write some of James and yeah, he helped write the songs, yeah, along with you. Right. So um Tom and James, they're uh, twin brothers. Um 
they co-wrote a, a lot of the songs they brought to the table some of their own songs for the album so feel the heat wild in the city the big ballad um and also stay the last track were, were their songs um, the rest of them were written by myself and Tom and James. And there was two tracks written by myself and Rob Wilde on the album as well. So there's a bit of a mixture in write, writers. Do you, so do you do some of the riffs or is it just the lyrics? Um, with the songs that I wrote, I will send over, I'll write the song on an acoustic guitar um, and then I'll send that song over to Tom and James. They will work on that idea and uh, look at the lyrics and maybe change a few around. They'll do a backing track to it as well. And then they'll they'll just add their ideas into the song. So it's 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 together. We we write them together if that makes sense. Do you feel like it's less pressure um, having it being a collaborative effort, being just a primary songwriter? Definitely. Yeah, I've always used someone else to help out with the writing. Um, so I just prefer it that way. I like working with people. Yeah. And and a lot, they also bring their own style to it. So just a little bit of different flavors, which is kind of cool. De definitely. I think a lot of the sa sound of, of the album is down to those two. They have a, a, a very unique sort of style which has developed the sound of nitrate and given it that that feel to it that we've got now big keyboards um loss of space between the songs um so it sounds nice and clear and crisp yeah definitely and i was gonna um i was gonna wait till james came on but i really do I really feel like the production, it really adds to the 80s sound because also you can't really have hysteria with um like uh the really raw new wave of British heavy metal. In your opinion, how important is the production when it came when it comes to these sort of albums? Oh, I think it's I think it's massive. I think it gives it that vibe. Um there's a lot of effects they use. Um there's layers after layers of keyboards. So whereas on the first couple of albums, we might have added a couple of keyboard parts. Um, you know, I've been down to their studio and there's just layer after layer after layer of keyboard and effects that build up this big production. Um, and I think a, a lot of it is down to the keyboard. Um, also, Tom's got this quite unique guitar sound, which adds to the flavour of the tracks as well. Um, so yeah, they've done a great job, and they've really transformed the the sound of the albums. Um, so they they take they've got to take a lot of credit for that. Yeah, definitely. There's more. There's definitely more of a consistency with these last two albums, and I think a big part of that has to do with Alexander Strandell's lead vocals. So um, how do you, you probably heard this a million times, but um. How do you feel like Alexander has shaped the band's sound? Um, is is well, he's an exceptional vocalist. I mean, he's probably one of the best in you know knocking around the genre we're in. Um, I was lucky enough to contact him uh, through COVID, and he wasn't doing anything at the time because of COVID, and he agreed to do the album, which was fantastic. Um, and he's continued to do this album as well. Um, he's got such a such a high range. And I, I'm a big fan of having songs like this sang at a high range. Um, and I think that makes a big difference. If you if you consider sort of Bon Jovi, he had a really good range on him. And now people say that the the music's changed a lot recently, but his range has come down quite a lot. And I think that has made a big difference to the way we interpret the songs. So now he sings at such a low level, the, the songs don't cut through as much as they used to, I think. Um, so it, it's a massive, 
you know, having someone with such a vocal range and and so pure with it as well. Oh yeah, for sure. I had I was talking about this with a friend about how Bon Jovi de- they're definitely not what they used to be back in the eighties and a big part of that has to do with John's vocals. Because obviously he can't hit the high notes anymore, but um, he just seems to be singing lower and lower and lower. And obviously you have to write different songs, like different subject matters to fit those vocals. Yeah, you're right. And sometimes I, I listen to the songs and oh, the song's not as good, but then it's just the way some of the, co- the choruses cut through and the pre-choruses aren't quite... Whereas if you took them up, you know, another step, it would add something to the song that's missing now. So I think it it makes a massive difference. If you've got someone with a good range, it really can, in this genre of music, cut through um, and make a big difference. Yeah, definitely. And it really adds to the commercial sound to have that, just that range. What sort of music do you like mostly? Uh... I like hard rock and heavy metal. Um, I yeah. noticed they're a big Def Leppard fan. Def Leppard's actually my yeah. favorite band. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're huge Def Leppard fans. Huh. So um, there's a few of the tracks that are influenced by them. And I read, yeah, I read a interview you did um, for the Renegade album. What song was it? Um, you've... If you, want you think it, you've got it. it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You think, you think you've got it. Yeah. And that one and the addicted one were very Def Leppard influenced. Yeah. The um, big, yeah. The big backing vocals and the perfect harmonies. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. Massive fan. So I was, I was lucky enough to uh, meet the band um, when they came to Nottingham last time. And lucky enough to uh, hang out backstage, and I went and watched the the gig in the mixing desk. So that was a massive treat for me. Oh, that's cool! You got to meet the band. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen them with Steve Clark? Have I watched three? Have you seen them with Steve Clark, or is it just the uh, Vivian and Phil Collins era? Uh, just be being and Phil Collins. Uh, yeah, Never my dad asked. he likes to brag that he saw, um, he saw them with Steve Clark when they came to Hawaii back in '83. All right. Mm-hmm. Have they been over there s- since? Have you seen them? Um, they came in 2018, but I wasn't, I wasn't aware of them at the time. So only my dad saw them. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully. Mm-hmm. You're hoping to see them then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure they'll be back, back when. Um, yeah, as long as they don't take like 30 years to come back. <laughs> 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 but another <laughs> highlight from the album for me is One Kiss to Save My Heart, which is a, what I call the album's big power ballad. So um, what can you tell us about that song? That was a a song Tom and James wrote and brought to the table for the album. Um, I had been after Issa, who is married to James. She sang uh, most of the demos, or she sang all of the demos to this album. So she had sang, the first time we heard the songs was with Issa singing before Alex took over and and did the, the lead vocals. Um, And that song sounded amazing with her voice on it. So, you know, I asked the question to James, do you think Issa would mind doing a duet? And she agreed to do it. Uh, She also sang a lot of the backing on the album as well. So her voice is in the the backing vocals, along with other musicians. Um, But yeah, it's um, I think it's got a, a real rock set vibe to it. And again, if you, you could imagine it on a movie soundtrack to a Tom Cruise film, maybe. <laughs> yeah, hopefully Tom Cruise will put your song on the next Top Gun album. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can only hope, can't we? Yeah. Um, so, um, 
the music videos, you've always, you and the band and the editing team obviously put in a lot of time and effort into these videos. But, um, do you feel like music videos are still necessary in the music industry in terms of promotion and getting your name out there, and why? It's a hard one, because I don't think they're as relevant as they were. I think there's other channels, Spotify and uh, streaming can get your music out there. Um, they're an expensive part of the process. Um, but again, I think they're still relevant, um, and it's about it's about getting something visually that's a little bit different that people want to watch, but as well trying to keep the budgets reasonable as well, because um, obviously there's not a lot of money in the genre anymore, um, and if you go and spend a lot of money for only a few thousand views, you could be spending that money on other marketing um avenues if that makes sense i think i still i still like to watch music video um but they're not quite the same impact as they were when you know they were on mtv and people were watching them and tuning in you know late at night to watch music videos i do definitely think that there's still a revel relevance for the music video music videos like you said but um personally i feel like it's more important of how you can perform the songs live but i know obviously that's a little bit, that's been difficult for your band since um it's kind of hard to travel uh to tour with everyone's schedules and the costs etc um so are there any plans for a night trip to tour at some point we, we're talking about it now we are we've been in discussions with a few promoters we're hoping to make it work in the new year I'm hoping to do a Nottingham gig um, because there's a promoter over here that's really keen to have us uh, play. And obviously that's my hometown. Um, and there's a few festivals that we've been in talks with. It's just making sure it's financially viable to get Alex over to the, whether it's in the UK or the band over to the country and cover the costs. So if the promoter comes in with the right deal where no one's out of pocket, then we'd love to do it. Yeah, because I definitely I know there's definitely a market for this type of music. Um, because obviously Journey is still out there and performing in Deaf Wildbirds. So there's definitely um an urgence for like this AOR type of music. Yeah, it tends to be as well that it's more popular in uh, different countries than the UK. So I know bands that have put on tours in the UK and the attendance is really poor, whereas they go over to, you know, a festival in Europe and, you know, there's big crowds over there. So, but again, you've got huge costs to get the band over to, to Europe, if that makes sense. Yeah, but helps. Um, Hawaii doesn't really like rock music either. That's why Def Leppard hasn't come in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, speaking of Def Leppard, your band is a throwback to these 80s classic hard rock bands. So what is it that you love about 80s hard rock music? It's, well, it's when I was born, really. So I, I lived through the, the sort of the late 80s, early 90s. Um, I grew up on that sort of music and I've never grown out of it, really. Um, it's... And I think as you get older, you get a little bit more nostalgic and you remember, you know, back to those days with probably more fondness than ever. And, you, you know, you, I suppose the music was fun. It was catchy. It was good. Um, so we just heavily influenced by it. Um, you know, Def Leppard, FM, Journey, Survivor. Europe. Yeah, Europe, yeah. Next, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely um the eighties were definitely a simpler more much more of a simple time in my opinion, where like less problems and everything was just a little bit more carefree, which is what I really like about the eighties. 
yeah definitely it was fun uh music was fun and that's i think that's the thing with nitrate we don't take ourselves too seriously it's about fun um you know fun music um a lot of the songs are based on love partying or there's nothing too serious in the lyrics i don't think um and it's about having a good time yeah uh, it's definitely um it's definitely kind of like, like coping music if that makes sense so like just if you're having a, a like a bad day just putting out putting on your album it, it's it's kind of like a time machine you're going back to the 80s where uh, like you said the songs were about um partying and love and all sort of things so it's definitely really a coping coping mechanism yeah there's nothing too serious there and you know it's it's the sort of music that you can go on a drive and, and put your window down and turn up the radio and you know enjoy yourself yeah for sure um so what i know that i noticed that nitrate has had quite a few lineup changes throughout the years and you've sw you switched to different record labels and with the changing times in the music industry so how do you feel the band has grown since its formation i think it's turned into more of a band i think originally it was more of a project so it was more about me writing some songs uh, getting them recorded, getting help. So originally, um, a musician called Rob Wilde helped me out a lot on the first two albums. And it's, it's grown since then, and it feels like a band now. Um, you know, we all get on, we all have a laugh and a joke, and we're, we're all on the same page musically and want to get out there and do some gigs. Yeah, that's definitely very important because... Obviously, the chemistry has to be there in order for a band to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we, have, we have got a great band. I mean, you've got Rich Jacks on guitar. Um, he joined at the back end of Renegade, and he, he appeared in a, uh, a couple of the videos for Renegade. Um, he's actually uh, in a Def Leppard, a really good Def Leppard tribute band. So his guitar style matches perfectly with Nitrate. Um, you've got Tom and James, which we've already mentioned. You've got Alex um, Cooper. He's on drums. Um, he also has a band called Devil Fire. Uh, and he plays, he, sorry, he is the lead vocalist for Devil Fire. Uh, but he does the drums, but also he does all the artwork as well. And me and him are big sci-fi fans. So that's where you get all the artwork and the the sort of Blade Runner-esque covers, if that makes sense. And then, then you've got Alex uh, Alexander Strandell, who's just got that voice. Yeah. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to add or plug in before, before we go? Not really, just, um, you know, I hope people like the music. And, um, you know, if there's a promoter over in Hawaii that wants to bring us over, I'm up for a trip to trip over there for a bit of sun. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. Um, so October 13th, the album comes out October 13th. Is that right? It does, yeah. Yeah, okay. and there's there's also a new video for Feel the Heat comes out on the same day. If you like the content we bring you about the heavy metal world, please like, subscribe, and comment to help us grow the channel.